Let's finish up this lecture with an example. The electric field of a plane wave propagating in a non-magnetic medium is given here. Assume the material can be classified as a good conductor. We also know it's non-magnetic medium. All right, we're going to go through a series of steps here. Uh, so I encourage you to work through these and push pause whenever you want to have more time to work on something. Uh, otherwise, in the next slide, I'm going to go through the solutions. Okay, first for part A, the question is, what is the direction of propagation? Well, for a plane wave, propagating the field's values only change in the direction of propagation. So here we see it's only changing with x. And as time goes up, x also goes up to get a constant argument. So we can say the direction of propagation is the positive x direction. All right, for part B, we want to know in what direction the electric field is oriented. That's given here with the z hat, so positive z direction. For part C, what is the wavelength? Well, we have to go through and see what we can pick out from this expression. So we know the general form here is omega t minus beta x. I'm using beta because we see here that the amplitude attenuates as it propagates. So we are expecting this material to be lossy. So beta, omega we can relate to the frequency, but beta, uh, which is 30, is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So we can use this to solve for lambda, and we get 0.21 meters. In part D, we want to know what the frequency of the wave is. Well, we just identified omega, which is 2 pi times 10 to the ninth. That's 2 pi f. Solving for f, we get 2 times 10 to the ninth hertz. Then for part E, we want to know what the conductivity of the material is. So we have to use the fact that we were told that the material is a good conductor. And we can also identify that because if you see here, this is alpha. Alpha and beta are equal to each other, which is another indication that it's a good conductor. So if you look at table 7-1, uh, which I have on the next slide if you want to look ahead, uh, in that we have alpha is equal to 30 is square root of pi f mu sigma. So here you see there's a sigma. We know f. We know it's non-magnetic, so we can put it a mu naught there. So once we solve here for sigma, that's the only unknown, we get 0 0.023 Siemens per meter. Then we have f. What is the skin depth? Skin depth is defined as being 1 over alpha, and we just solved for alpha, so it's 1 over 30. 0.033 meters. And part G, what is the phase difference between E and H? Well, without even having to calculate anything, if we know it's a good conductor, we know that there's going to be 45 degrees, um, they're going to be 45 degrees out of phase. And we'll actually see that in the next part. In part H, we want to calculate the characteristic impedance. So we're going to use the good conductor column. We want the characteristic impedance. So this is our expression that we want to solve. We want A to C. It could be complex. In this case, it is 1 plus J. And we know alpha is 30. We already solved for sigma, 0 0.023. And so that gives us 1,300 plus J, 1300 ohms. In part I, we want to convert this time domain electric field expression to the phasor domain. So we're going to get a vector phasor now. The direction is the same, z hat. Amplitude 25 is the same, so is the e to the minus 30x. That's in this, the same in the time domain as it is in the frequency domain, a phasor domain. And then we'd have to use Euler's identity to convert this to an exponential. And we also are going to factor out the e to the j omega t 
So you get e to the j omega t and e to the minus beta x here for this term. Factor that out. And so we are just left with e to the minus beta t uh, x. So that's e to the minus. Oh, and don't let me forget the j here. It's a phase. 30x. So this has a j. It's a phase. This does not have a j. And that's volts per meter. For part j, we want the corresponding h phasor. So we can use the general expression eta, 1 over eta. Gamma hat, this cost product is this the correct direction for the magnetic field. And so solving this, we already know eta. It's 1 over 1300 plus j 1300. Um, gamma hat, that's the direction of propagation, that's x hat, crossed with our E field expression here. So I'll just say here E. All right, so by the right hand rule, x hat crossed with uh, E, which is in the z direction, will give us a minus y hat. Then if we take the amplitude 25 and divide by this 1300 plus j 1300, it's easier to perform that division if we convert this to a magnitude and a phase. So if we take, we can calculate the magnitude using 1300 squared plus 1300 squared, take the square root of that, and we get 1838.5. And uh, you could find the angle, the, since these are equal, the angle you would get is 45 degrees. So now it's a matter of doing 25 divided by 1838.5 for the amplitude, which we get 0 0.0136. And we'll have to still account for this 45 degree phase. So we'll do that in just a minute. So for the amplitude, we also have e to the minus 30x. And then for the uh, rest of this, we have e to the minus 30 j 30 x. That's for the beta, the phase. Now is a good time to tack on this extra phase that we get from eta. So what I can do is we'll say we're also going to have a minus sign, uh, minus 45 degrees since eta was in the denominator and it had a phase of positive 45 degrees. So I'll put the minus sign out in front here and we'll have a parentheses 30x plus 45 degrees and actually normally we would write that in terms of uh, radians so let me go ahead and do that so we'll do pi over 4 all right that's our uh, magnetic field phasor expression and in the last part we want to convert this magnetic field to the time domain. So we would get h, now it's just a vector in the time domain. It's a function of x and t. The orientation is the same. The magnitude is the same in the time domain as the phasor domain. The only thing now is that we want to write this exponential as a cosine. So we have cosine and I'm going to run out of room so let me put that over here cosine omega, which is 2 pi times 10 to the ninth t, minus 30x, and then minus pi over 4. And this has, it's always good to put units, amps per meter. So let me put that here, amps per meter, and um, Sorry, this is, let me separate that out.